Hello there, this is a quick video to help all of you A-level photographers with your upcoming exams. They're probably going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks if you're going back to school after Easter. And this is just to give you a little example of a great A-grade exam unit that was submitted last year. And in this video there's going to be uh, tips for your exams and things to expect including images of the prep book, the essential sheets that I get all my guys to do and crucially the exam day sheets which if you, you've really got to make sure that you get right guys. I haven't put any images of the outcomes in this video. There's a little sheet here which just shows all of the different examples of what this student made on their exam day with some short bits of accompanying text just explaining what it is and how it relates to the question. Uh, just before we get into the video, just please remember if you are doing your prep book and getting that up to date over Easter or whenever, make sure you put a drawing page of ideas in. You don't have to be Picasso, you don't have to be an amazing drawer, it can be stick men, boxes, whatever. Please make sure you get a drawing page into your book just shows your ideas, bits of annotation, it's really essential. And if you're feeling a little bit more creative, what I often get my guys to do is make a contact splice page, which is where you print off your contact sheets, or if you're lucky enough to have a dark room, make some dark room contacts, and then using cut up parts of those contacts, cut, assemble, juxtapose, mix them together to see what you can create. It could lead to ideas later on, it could lead to some really interesting developments you've not really thought of, and it really forces you to look at your contact sheets, probably the most important tool that a photographer would have. In your exam, just a couple of important tips to you to think about. Don't forget you've got to finalise your project and answer the question. If you've done a question on walking, that was one of the 2019 exam question questions for the AQA exam paper, please make sure it relates to walking. Don't just do something totally random. If you have started off being about something specific and it's strayed away a little bit, make sure you pull it back to what it originally was. And you have to make a final piece. If you have a quick look at this image here, this just shows you a final piece that was from one of my students previously. And even though it wasn't the main final piece, they selected a singular image, the one most favourite one. This showed one of each of the 18 developments that they made, all to do with their theme and their project, which they presented together in one uh, way of showing it, one format. So it's a really good idea to think about different ways of formatting your final piece. Take creative risks. That's a really important one. I know it's an A-level exam, I know it's going to be dead stressful, you've got three days. Uh, it's the culmination of all the studies you've been doing so far, but take a risk. Think about what your strengths are. Think about what your weaknesses are. In the case of this student's work here, um, very, very um, accomplished on Photoshop. This was an actual A2 final piece that was done in a photography looking at photo collage and over industrialization. Yes, great on Photoshop, great technical skills. But on the third day of an exam, last three hours, I wanted him to try something different. But obviously, I can't tell him what it was. He had to find it. I just suggested that it was nothing to do with the computer, nothing to do with Photoshop. So he selected photo collage, and he also started to use a transfer medium called cellulose thinners, which transferred his images into a different surface. So he then created quite busy, um, complex collages using cellulose thinners and more simplistic photo collage. It shows that he could take a creative risk, and it was a really interesting thing for him to try on that exam day. Make sure you think practically about what you're doing. Models, props, what are you gonna need? Don't leave it out, don't leave it at home. Once the exam starts, you can't go. You don't want to be like dead Marty for the rest of the day. If you know you're in the exam and you've missed something that's sitting on your desk at home or whatever. Um, last two couple of points before I start getting into this prep book. Please make sure that you don't leave this prep work until after the exam. Too many students think that they're going to be able to get the last bits of cropping and selecting on the contacts in, a bit of writing, a bit of research. You can't. Once the exam starts, your book is done. Your prep work's done. You can't do anything more to it. You can access it in the exam, but you cannot add to it, okay? So remember that. Remember your timings as well. If you're like most normal schools and you've got about five hours in a day, and that's split over three days, that's 15 hours, remember your timings, okay? Think about when you're gonna have time to put the writing in. It's not just gonna be about the written content. You've gotta make sure that it's not just about your practical, creative content. You've gotta explain what you've done. You don't have to write paragraphs or essays, just a little bit of short summary, and that's generally done in as terms of an exam day sheet or an exam summary, something like that. There's examples of this video just to give you a little bit of help with that. Just a couple of other quick things. Phones and internet are banned. If I had a pound for every time, someone asked me a question like, can they have their phone or can they go on the internet? Then I'd be able to buy, I don't know, 10 tins of tuna, I don't know, but it'd be a lot. Um, and eat properly. Don't just have energy drinks, Monsters, Red Bull, whatever you think you'll get through. If you have too many energy drinks, you're not gonna be able to feel your face and you're probably gonna be thinking you'll be able to see into the future. That's not gonna help you with your photography work. And save your work regularly. What if you get a power cut? Yep, save it every 10 minutes just to make sure. 
If you're working on Photoshop, don't just save stuff as JPEGs and hope for the best. JPEGs can corrupt, so save your work as PSDs, those Photoshop documents, as well as JPEGs. And you're going to be under a lot of stress. Don't cut and paste stuff from one folder to another. You might accidentally delete it or something might happen. It's happened at least twice before to me with my guys in my exams. Just copy and paste and cut it or delete it later. And obviously by the end of it, make sure you've got some stamina. I tried to think about Chuck Norris for stamina, but I've just chucked a sport of in, in there as well for all of you younger guys. You're going to be tired by the end of those three days. And if you've just done an art exam as well, just be prepared for, you know, you're going to need a bit of rest and relaxation. But we don't have time for that now. Just going straight into um, these essential sheets that I get my students to do. These are done before the exam. Here is a content sheet. It just shows a chronological sequence of everything that was done from start to finish in the prep work. Some students decide to do those in the exam as well. This sheet here, very important for those examiners there. Um, you want to make sure that your connections and your artist research is explicitly clear. So what my guys do is they show an artist, they show their image, they show a developed image, is, is sort of, which was inspired by that, and then the accompanying text, which is a quick summary. This sheet here is titled with the exam questions from last year, Unexpected Perspectives, and it just summarises the exam prep to that point. And this sheet, the outcome sheet, this one was actually done in the exam, and it was then printed and submitted with the outcomes just to explain what's going on. Those four there that you've just seen, they make up the essential sheets that go into the prep books that they were done before the exam, and they also are submitted as separate sheets just to make it really clear for those assessment objectives. Uh, this is the first page of the book that the student made. You don't have to do a contents page. If you're a bit OCD, it might be something for you. I'd much rather just get into the photographs, but it really helped this student to plan and stay organised. This next page, sometimes a really good idea to put in your exam paper, any annotations, any initial thoughts, whatever you've had, write it onto the paper, write it in there, and then contextualise those ideas and summarise them, and then just put them into a little page of drawings or annotations, like this student's just done here on the right-hand side. Next page here, showing a mood board, an annotated then artist that she's then picked from that. Pinterest, Google, whatever, get on there, make a mood board, print it off, annotate it. Try and think about how you can make those annotations meaningful and relevant to the question, as well as detailing how you will develop your ideas in view of that. Next page here, more formal research, wrote up and contextualized, and make sure that the, the language is really clear there and everything is well explained. And then just what those students' intentions were for the rest of the exam. First portrait set that was done. This entire student set was based around the idea of trying to show a fantasy based character um, from different perspectives originally, using the artist Iris Van Herpen, who's a fashion uh, designer and creates dresses from everything from 3D printed wood to recycled plastics. This set here is showing a uh, general format that most of my guys tend to use, which is contact sheets, which preferably going to be edited and annotated, best images, and a little bit of development coupled with explanation there. Next set, this was based on broken glass. She was trying to use the, the glass to distort the portrait through layering on Photoshop, as well as then uh, in the photography of the glass. This page, using a lens ball, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, or you might use marbles or a half prism, anything like that. That was then taken into the dark room, dark studio, uh, with a single light source to then create an interesting set of images, again with the intention to layer. The idea of the um, lens ball itself linked to the idea of a crystal ball, which had fantasy connotations, and linked to the ideas later on. Um, projections as well, projected uh, just to see what the potential for that was. So the first couple of sets being quite experimental, you don't have to have an idea for the end set straight away. Then after that, this is a really, really good page to do. Sorry, it's my dog trying to break in. One second. Marvellous, the dog's in now and he's a lot happier now. He's sat next to me while I'm recording this video. But anyway, where are we? Uh, where to next page? It's a really, really good idea once you've done this. A couple of sets under your belt. Have you got any new ideas, new influences from either taking those sets or additional research that you may have made? Put them into a double page, get that annotated. It's like catnip for examiners or cats, whatever that moment may be. Please make sure you think about doing that. It's a really good way of communicating your ideas um, after those sets and that little page onto another one, which is based on broken glass. So she bought glasses uh, from the internet, just cheap pairs of glasses from eBay. She crushed them up and crashed them together because they were quite round like the lens ball, but they also represented the broken glass. So they were then used to frame up her images and go from there. Then looking into the armour more deeply was based on Iris Van Herpen, who I just mentioned a little bit earlier on. Really key in quite an interesting prop, which was then used and then developed later on. This next page here is then looking at the elements. So she made these paper sculptures, and then from once she'd made those sculptures, they then became separate singular elements to photograph and layer as well. This next page then showing developments. Clear print screens are then shown from Photoshop, 
and how she's layered, how she's mixed, what the ideas are. Make sure you don't just stick a load of sets in a few developments and hope for the best. You need to make sure your idea is clear. This is the sort of thing that A grade students are doing. This page is totally different to the ones you've just seen. It's a showcase page. It's just showing what this student has selected as images they'd like to take forward. There's a little bit of layering into the one on the left and the right, I suppose, when you look a bit more closely there. And it's just no writing, no nothing else, just a showcase, just showing what her ideas are. This page here, taking the idea of the model and changing it slightly, using more expressive hand gestures to make the set more interesting and more dramatic, which is the look that she wanted to get. And then this one is then, instead of going into the dark room and just using that, went into the white studio in, instead. You don't have to have a dark room or a white studio. You just need a black tablecloth, white tablecloth, and a bit of wall. You can do the same thing, single light source. It doesn't have to have a studio to be successful in photography, okay? Um, but the settings have been carefully changed. This student really experimented with making sure they got the best quality shot when they were doing it. Not just using your standard zoom lenses as well. Try and think about using a prime lens. If you're lucky enough to have one, an 85 mil lens or a 50 mil lens, just use it. The chances are you'll be able to get a lot more quality and success with your shots in lower light conditions as well. It allows you to be a lot faster as well. So think about those prime lenses, guys. Really, really good little lens to have. Next set here, looking at black armor in the white space. So just taking that idea of a set and refining it. Black armor, black background. So she's really exhausted that idea by now. And it's clear to see that the actual framing and the format of her photographs have become more confident. She knows what she wants. The model's more responsive because she understands the idea as well. Um, and it, the sets are just going a lot more fluidly. And on this page as well has been showing the contact sheets and all the set work and the information, the connection to the artist. She's also done developing where she's layered previous work into it as well. It worked really well for the student, but some people prefer to keep it separate. This next page goes more into the developing of ideas and the experimentation in Photoshop, not just layering willy-nilly because the, the examiners hate that. You might as well just stick a big middle finger in your book. It would have the same effect. Make sure your layering is relevant. Don't just put random stuff in there because it might start looking like Photoshop sick and that's not what you want. Another page of the developments afterwards, looking at the space, and trying to isolate that figure to make it more dramatic and then make the lighting more dramatic using those lighting effects as well. Showcase page follows that, just showing those two ideas then brought forward. These two in, in particular then really did influence the development of mirroring and reflecting the ideas using the idea of like reflections in, in glass. This page here, just explaining those developments. This is one of my favorite pages in the book. You couldn't make this better if you tried. You've got the development image there, you've got those artist connections and then clear written annotation to explain that. At this stage in the work, um, it was nearly getting close to exam time. She only had about a week or so left until it was time for the three day exam. This set was inspired on refining. So that AO2, if you're doing the AQA, that assessment objective that re refines, that experiments, this shows a thought process has then taken place taking the projection set that didn't work as well in the first couple of weeks of her experimenting, but then she then mixed it with that armor, with that prop, with the model that she had more success with, and that became then one of the uh, most important penultimate sets for additional layering then in the exam. On the following pages, she does experiment with those, applying the same symmetry, the same isolation in space, the desaturation and sharpening of some of those images. Um, in some cases, she was then drawing analogies between what she was doing there and a personification of uh, an evil character from a fantasy, uh, possibly like a, a dark queen or something along the lines of that. And then she then started to layer other things back in, those original prop shots of that paper sculpture she'd made with then the lens ball and then other parts that were similar to Iris Van Herpen. Uh, this page here of the showcase just shows the single half on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, which has been sepiaed, um, which is just then showing what her intentions are. She quite liked that diagonal slice of the image. In some cases, she then later on draws analogies between playing cards and tarot cards in the work, just to add that extra sort of spiritual quality into the work. These last couple of pages here then just show the essential sheets just printed on a smaller scale, printed outside of the book for the students there so they can be seen on A2 or A3, just a little bit bigger. Sometimes when you shrink the text down on A4, they can get a little bit lost. And then the exam preparation, just a few little notes and lists of what she was intending to do. Some students go mental with this and they put what they're going to do on each hour of each day. I wouldn't recommend doing that. You want to have an idea of what you're doing, but planning to the nth degree can actually close you down. It can actually stop you from being creative. 
Okay? Make sure you leave things open to chance. Yes, have some outcomes planned, you know are gonna work, but also leave stuff to a little bit of a tangent, like I mentioned right at the start of the video. That's the end of the prep workbook there that you will have seen. And the next images are just a couple of things which I get my guys to think about before the exam. This slide here is just from a PowerPoint which just show that you need to have sheets. I like my guys to work on white bits of paper for the exam because the books that they work into for the prep work are black. That way, when the examiner comes in, they can see the difference between the prep work, which is on black book, that's all fine. Not to be confused with the exam work done on white pieces of paper away from the prep work to make that clear line between the two. These are just a couple of extra slides that I put on there that are just showing this student's work and what they wrote about for their summary at the end of each exam. I would recommend that you leave at least, at least half an hour, just write a quick summary by hand, type it out, whatever, get it onto a sheet with the work that you make on the exam day to explain what you've done, why you've done it, and how it connects to your question and your artist you've studied. This is from day three, the same students. They did an awful lot of work in the exam, refining, layering, getting that perfect look um, to their unexpected perspectives that they were looking for. They also took an extra set in the exam, which you'll see um, on the following sheets where they used a male model to do something different to alter what they've done. This is an exam sheet from a totally different student. No typewritten information in sight. They were more concentrating on the images themselves, the actual production of those work, and, and it was the props and the setup that this student concentrated on. But sometimes a little bit of annotation might be all you need. This student in particular did minimal annotations on the sheet, but then did a summary at the end to enforce all of her ideas. This is the first sheet here, and I haven't put them in any specific order that they were done, but I'm just showing you there from day one, going through to day two, and then day three. Some of the sheets that you'll see are more showcase based, so they will either be a prop that was used, or it might be a chosen print that they've had printed off. In the case of this image here, instead of just using white paper to create an outcome, the student then used the actual shape of the sculpture they were using and they printed the paper and then made paper sculptures out of her images. That was then going to be one of the different ways of showing that she could go on a creative tangent. And it wasn't just Photoshop. She was doing something practical in real life that could get marks for experimentation. Then these other images here are just accumulations of everything that she's then done throughout those exam days with accompanying annotation and information. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. And basically, just good luck with your exam. There are some other videos on my channel that have got some absolutely brilliant units on that it might help you just to have a little bit of a look at. Okay, all the best guys. Good luck. Toodles.